How's it going, 12s? I'm just going to be going through how you plot a cubic. So I'm going to be doing two examples with you from exercise 9.2. Uh, the first one I'm going to be doing is question one. And they're asking us to plot f of x equals minus x cubed plus 3x plus 12. A plus two, sorry. All right, guys, so just remember that this a value over here, this coefficient here of the x cubed, is going to tell us the shape. So if we look at it, the general one, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. If this a value is greater than zero, in other words, a positive, we know that the graph is gonna go up first. If it's a negative, it's going to go down first. Okay, so if we look at our example, we've got a negative A. So we know that the shape of this graph is going to go down first. And that's just the general thing, okay? The general shape of it. The next thing that we do is we find the intercepts. So the first thing I'm going to find is the x-intercept. And that happens when y is equal to zero. All right, so we get zero is equal to minus x cubed plus three x plus two. I'm just going to divide through by the negative to make my highest power positive. So we get zero is equal to x cubed minus three x minus two. Okay, now in order to factorize this grade 12, so we, use, we need to use the remainder factor theorem. Okay, and what I do is I list the factors of this constant here. So the factors of it are going to be 1 and 2, and it's plus, minus, plus, minus. So all I do is I put these numbers into this one here. If I get a 0, then it is a factor. So I'm going to test minus 1 first. So minus 1 cubed, minus 3, minus 1 minus 2. Now remember, if I get a 0 here, then it's a factor. And there we have it. So I'm just going to state that. I'm just going to say that um, minus 1 cubed minus 3 minus 1 minus 2 gives us 0. Therefore, x, now I reverse this sign here, so x plus 1 is a factor of f of x, okay? Grade 12s, please show this step, all right? Do not go straight into factorizing it. You will lose marks. So we know what our first factor is. It's x plus one. Now guys, you can use your synthetic division or your long division, whatever you wanna use. I just use my method. There is a video on it if you wanna have a look and it's the same as what I've done in class. So x times what gives us x cubed? It's x squared. 1 times what gives us minus 2? It's minus 2. Then that 1 multiplied by the x squared gives us x squared. How many x squareds do we have in the original? None. So I need to take away x squared. But I decrease the power by 1. Okay. If that confused you guys, just do your long division or your synthetic. So here we get 0 is equal to x plus 1. I can factorize this now. It's a trinomial. And we get x plus 1, x minus 2. So our x-intercepts are x is equal to minus 1, or x is equal to minus 1, or x is equal to 2. There are x-intercepts. Now... I just want to point out here that because we're getting these equal x-intercepts here, in other words, equal roots, I know that this is going to be a turning point, okay? And we'll talk about that in a second. The next intercept I'm going to find is the y-intercept, and we make x equal to zero. So we get from the original, y is equal to minus zero cubed, plus 3 times 0, plus 2. So y is equal to 2. 
is our y-intercept. Okay, the next thing I'm going to find is the turning points. And we find the turning points by setting the derivative equal to zero. So f dashed x equals to zero, and we get minus 3x squared plus 3 equals 0. Divide through by minus 3, and we get x squared minus 1 equals 0. Factorize this, so we get x, x plus 1 minus 1 equals 0. So x is equal to minus 1, or x is equal to 1. And now we have our x values for the turning points. Now remember, I told you guys here earlier that because we're getting these equal roots, I know that's going to be a turning point. And there it comes out there, okay? Just to keep things on the same page, I just need to find the y values that correspond to this. So I need to take these and put them back into the original to find the y values. So f of minus 1 is going to be equal to, now I know f of minus 1 is going to give me 0 because we've already done it over there. So my one turning point is minus one, zero. Now I need to do it with the other x value. So f of one back into the original. And if we put that on the calculator, we will get four. So our other turning point is one, four. All right, now the next thing that we need to find is the point of inflection. So the point three, point of inflection. To find the point of inflection, we set the second derivative equal to zero. So I know what the first derivative was. F dashed x was equal to minus 3x squared plus 3. So we find the second derivative, f double dashed, and we set that equal to zero to find the point of inflection. So our second derivative would give us minus 6x equals to zero, so that means that x is equal to zero. I need to now take that zero and put it back into the original. So f of zero would give us minus zero cubed plus three times zero plus two, so that gives us two. So therefore the point of inflection is zero, two. Okay guys, now that we have all the information that we need to plot it, I'm just going to draw up a, a neat rough sketch. Okay, it's not going to be super accurate. All right, so the first thing that I look at is the x-intercepts. Okay, so we've got x-intercepts of minus one, minus one, and two. Okay, so minus 1, 1, 2, so we have an x-intercept there, and an x-intercept there. Then, the next thing I'm going to look at is the y-intercept, so our y-intercept is 2. One, two. So we have a y-intercept over there. Then I'm going to have a look at the turning points. So we have a turning point at minus 1, 0, which we've already marked. That was one of our x-intercepts. And the other one is 1, 4. 2, 3, and 4. So we have 1, 4, a turning point over there. All right, so now that we have everything plotted on here, I just wanted to show you our general shape. Our general shape was going down first, then up, then down. Okay, so, and we know it's going to turn here, go through there, turn there, go through there. So it's going to come down first, it's going to turn, it's going to go through there, turn there, come around, and then down through our other x-intercept. Okay, and obviously our point of inflection is also over there. What I would like you guys to do now is just to label your things. So this turning point is one four this over here is two zero here we have zero two and then there we have minus one and zero okay so just label your points like that 
And guys, that's pretty much it, how you plot a cubic. So I'm going to do one more example with you. This is going to be number three. Okay, and here they're asking us to plot f of x equals x cubed minus 5x squared minus 8x plus 12. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to have a look at is the general shape. And because our a value here is positive, I know the graph is going to go up, then down, then up. Okay, first point, we need to find the x-intercept. So x-intercept y is equal to zero so we get zero is equal to x cubed minus 5x squared minus 8x plus 12. now with this one it's different from the previous one because i don't have to divide through by the negative my highest power of x is positive but what we're going to do is we're going to do the remainder factor theorem so i list the factors of this constant so that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And remember, it's always plus minus. Okay, so now I'm going to test minus 1 first. Um, I always start with minus 1. So minus 1 cubed. Just back into the original, guys. Minus 5 minus 1 squared minus 8 minus 1 plus 12. Now remember if this gives us 0 it's a factor and it does not give us 0 so it's not a factor so minus 1 does not work. I'm going to test 1 and we get 0. So I'm just going to put that down here. I'm just going to say that um, 1 cubed minus 5 1 squared minus 8 1 plus 12 equals 0 therefore reverse that sign we get that x minus 1 is a factor of f of x okay again guys please show this so now over here i can go into it i know what my first factor is it's x minus 1 Again, you can use your synthetic or your long division. I'm just going to use my way. So x times what gives you x cubed? It's x squared. Minus 1 times what gives you plus 12? It's minus 12. Then, to work up my middle term, this times this gives me minus x squared. How many x squared do I have in the original? I have minus 5. So it's minus 4x squared, but I decrease it by 1. Okay? So here we have a trinomial, which I can factorize. And we get x minus 1. And if we factorize this, we'll get x minus 6, x plus 2. So that means that x is equal to 1, or x is equal to 6, or x is equal to minus 2. Those are our x-intercepts. The next thing I find is the y-intercept. And that's when x is equal to 0. We get y is equal to, back into the original, 0 cubed minus 5, 0 squared minus 8, 0 plus 12. So we get a y-intercept of 12. The next point is our turning points. Okay, so we take the first derivative and set it equal to zero. Okay, and if we differentiate that, we will get 3x squared minus 10x minus 8 equals to zero. Factorize the trinomial. And we get 3x plus 2 x minus 4. So that means we get x is equal to minus 2 over 3 or x is equal to 4. Now remember these are your x values. We still need to find the y values guys. So I'm going to take those x values and put them back into the original. 
So the first one, f of minus 2 over 3. Just put 2 over minus 2 over 3 into your x, and you should get 400 over 27. Okay, so therefore our first turning point is minus 2 over 3 and 400 over 27. Okay, the other one I'm going to do is f of 4, and here you should get minus 36. So our second turning point is 4 minus 36. Okay. Now, guys, just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm just going to convert these just to decimals just to see what they are. It makes it a lot easier to plot. So this is minus 0, 7, and this one here should give us 14, 8. All right. The next thing that we look for is the point of inflection. Okay, and that happens when our second derivative is equal to zero. So our first derivative was f dashed is equal to 3x squared minus 10x minus 8. Take the second derivative and set that equal to zero. And our second derivative will be 6x minus 10 equals to zero. So we get x is equal to 5 over 3. All right. I need to take that and put it back into my original to find out what the y value is. So f of 5 over 3 is equal to minus 286 over 27. 5 over 3 minus 286 over 27. Okay, is our point of inflection. Right, so now we're ready to plot this thing up. Again, guys, a rough, neat one. Okay, so the first thing I look at is my x-intercepts. So we have 1, 6, minus 2. So 1, 6. And then the other one was minus 2. Okay, so there's our x-intercepts. The next thing I look at is the y-intercept, which is 12. So that is going to be up here somewhere. Okay. The next thing we look at is our turning points. So the first one was this minus 0 0.7, 14.8. So minus 0 0.7, if that's minus half, 0 0.7 is there. And then we'll have 14 is over there. So our turning point is just above that, about there. Okay. The other one is... 4 minus 36. So I'm just going to say that minus 36 is over here, and then 4 minus 36 is like that. Now that we have everything that we need to plot this, guys, and we know that the general shape is going to be up, down, then up first. So it goes up, turns, comes down, goes through, turns, and then comes up. Okay? turns, and then goes through the other x-intercept. And that is f of x. And guys, just remember, label your stuff. So this here is minus 2, 0. This one over here was minus 2 over 3. And 400 over 27. This over here is 0, 12. This over here is 1, 0. This one over here is 4 minus 36. And over here we have 6, 0. And that is how you plot the cubics, guys. It's really not that difficult. Just follow these steps as I did on this video. Okay, good luck, guys.